All right, folks, we're back on the boss, man. Show friend of the show, Coach Mike McGarvey, Lafayette Leopards out of the Patriot League. Mike, good to see you, man. Good to see you somewhere in Atlanta as well at, at Lake Point. How you doing, brother? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on again. It was great to see you in the summertime out recruiting um, in your hometown, which is always fun. Yes, indeed, man. Let me ask you, man, uh, uh, how's it been this offseason for you um, trying to get – things going and get out to your first four years to head coach now, second going into year two now. So how'd you kind of self-scout this summer for you and your staff to make sure you all are getting better and staying ahead of the curve right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think we finished very well, right? Tied for second in the Patriot League, and we got close enough to compete for a championship in mid-February. So that, that's what you want to be doing as a team and uh, want your program to be competitive in that way. Um, but towards the end, we didn't play our best basketball. And, and that's the one area where I said, OK, what what does it take here with this group returning um, in terms of consistency and making sure that we have that push into March where we can perform our best in conference tournament play? Um, and the two things that we looked at as a staff pretty critically was our, our offensive transition rate. Um, we scored it pretty well when we were in transition, but we were a slower paced team and we didn't get out often enough to get easy baskets. So that's one area that we'll focus on moving into this season to play a little bit faster and make sure that we're trying to get earlier baskets uh, in transition with advantage play. Um, and then, then the other area was offensive rebounding. So those two things, you know, and, and I think those two areas contributed to pace of play, put us in uh, some positions where we had to grind out some games, uh, especially late in games with uh, with tight scores. Um, so if we can improve in those areas, I think, uh, you know, we'll be a much better offensive team all around. Um, but it will just contribute to, to having more balance from the defensive end to the offensive end. 100 percent. You know, and I know a lot of coaches have been talking to me about, one wanted to crash your glass a little bit more. So how do you kind of balance crashing versus getting back in transition? This is always a tough balance trying to balance those two things. How much do we crash? How much do we get back in transition? So how do you kind of balance that as well? Yeah, I think just being comfortable with having the more aggressive mindset. And, uh, you know, we might give up a layup now and then if we're going and we're crashing and we're trying to get offensive rebounds. Um, but over a 40 minute game, if we can go offensive rebound and get more possessions and get more stick backs and opportunities at the rim or, or kick out threes, um, then whatever we give up in transition, although it might be very loud, it might be a breakaway or something like that. It might be, you know, the, by percentages, I think we'll be in a, in a better uh, position to score rather than give up transition. Um, so it, it is a balancing act, but it starts with just the mentality of we're going to be aggressive. We're going to go after the ball. Um, and the objective of for defense, at least for us, is to get the ball back anyway. So if we can go get that off of the rim before we have to play defense, then that's good for us. In this summer, how much did you use analytics side to teach, show your guys who were returning from last year and the guys transferring in about their hot and cold zones? You know, I know my dad talks, talked about with his players, in, even in high school, you're not good inside the floor. You can shoot from the right side of the floor right here. So how much did you use analytics to help your guys understand where their shot, shot profile should be at and what's a good shot for them inside your offense? Yeah, we're very fortunate. So I have an assistant coach in Nikolai Arnold, who has been, you know, heading our analytics ever since I was the head coach at Lycoming. So he's got years under his belt in looking at uh, objective statistics and how that applies to not only individual performances, but also our team and lineup data as well. Um, he's also took the initiative and started an analytics group on campus for student athletes. I mean, for students in general uh, to be part of our team and, and help us out with some behind the scenes uh, data tracking. So we've done that. Uh, pretty extensively as a staff um, but how much do we share with the players that's always the debate um, you know and and I think it, it gives us some good indicators on some areas of improvement and and what some of the guys are doing very well um, and we'll have those conversations and we'll show the numbers to back back up those things in terms of trying to get them uh, to perform an optimal level uh, but at the end of the day it's also a, a player's game and we want them to be free to make decisions and to feel confident in doing that and not be overloaded by information um, so we share but we don't uh overload them with that info so that they feel like they can't make the decision on the court and be a ball player 100 percent. that's that great balance again about how much to give make make sure there's the right mix of it and this summer mike of uh, what you guys with workouts was it more development wise or more trying to do team stuff because with this new new era we in we have some have a new team every year so how much do you have to kind of tweak the summer to say, let's do some, and some, some concepts offensively and defensively versus just sheer development awesome alone. Yeah, we're fortunate. We didn't have any scholarship players enter the transfer portal. So I, I felt really good about our team and, and the returning group that we have. 
Um, we've got six seniors that have all played meaningful minutes, and we've got a group of really talented freshmen um, to come in here. So for the summertime, it was a little bit more big picture concepts, um, trying to get the guys to play a little bit faster, like we mentioned before, um, to get the competitive nature in a practice setting ramped up as quickly as we possibly could, um, especially for the younger first year players to, to get uh, you know acclimated with what it takes to be consistent on the court over the duration of an hour workout or two hour practice. Um, so, so that's where we spent most of our time. Um, uh, but also, you know, we, we've got really good player development. I mentioned Coach Nikolai Arnold with the analytics, but uh, we've got three other assistant coaches in Darius Dangerfield, Sean O'Brien and Cameron Ayers, who played at a significantly high level um, and have all had individual careers that, that our guys look up to. So having them on the court to improve skills and, and get extra shots and, and to see the game in different ways from an individual standpoint was the secondary aspect of how we used the summer. No doubt. And, and Mike, for those young guys, man, I talk about getting them to see about how to have the right habits, be consistent every day in the weight room, in the film room, off the court, really loving the game of basketball and getting those guys to understand how much dedication it takes at the D1 level to be a great player. Sure. Uh, I think we did a nice job of recruiting um, players that already have that. Um, and it's not perfect, right? So every single individual has a different journey and in, in, in when it when it relates to like how much effort do they put into it? Uh, do they understand how to manage their day? What aspects of their game are they really focusing on? Whether it's diet, sleep, film study, extra shots, whatever it might be. Um, so all those things go into, you know, creating the optimal performance when it comes time to play. Um, so, you know, we do spend significant time trying to help guys and meet them where they're at and then push them a little bit further and, and take it, you know, one week at a time. Um, but really, you know, I, I feel great because our, our first year guys, not only do they have great habits on and off the court, but they also have great enthusiasm. Um, so I mentioned that combination of having upperclassmen that have been in significant games and can lead with the enthusiasm and talent of our younger group so it's been a really cool culture and dynamic um for this year you got five freshmen you know it's world of everybody once gets older stay older you got five young guys in the pipeline so talk about high school recruiting right now and how as the COVID guys age out this year and you know the high majors are looking at the high school guys you guys can get a, a some quality talent internationally and domestically of high school player that you usually wouldn't get when guys are just focused on being old and staying old in that portal. Yeah, well, look, Lafayette is one of the best academic schools in the country, right? So we're, we're fortunate to be in that cluster of Ivy and Patriot League schools that that provide strong academics and Division One basketball. Um, so, so that helps us attract talented student athletes, uh, regardless of whether it's transfer portal or um, freshmen uh, out of high school. Uh, where, where I think, you know, I, I mentioned that we didn't have any uh, scholarship players enter the portal. Um, we're not immune to that. So what the future holds, uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but we might have to supplement at some point with some transfers and uh but what i've noticed for us at lafayette is that um, a lot of the mid-major schools and the high major schools have been taking transfers and you know i watched the mick cronin interview the other day from the big 10 media day and he talked about like 50 percent of the roster in some cases have been flipped over we haven't had that. So when you look at what some schools that are in mid-major plus or high major that may be a little bit elevated from what our level is, uh, they're taking other college players, with, which leaves a void to get really talented high school players. Um, and I think that we're in a position with the kids that we have committed for the 2025 class, in addition to the freshmen that we have on our roster now, um, to have the most talented recruiting, back-to-back -back recruiting classes, I think, in you know maybe the history of Lafayette, which is exciting. And what I love about your roster, Mike, is you got guys from six two to seven foot tall. So talk about defensively. It's gonna help you guys be very multiple and very and very much variable how you play and switch, switch things on defense, do a lot of different things that way. So talk about having that, that ability to, to play multiple ways with the size you have on, on your roster from six, six two to seven foot tall. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting because there's a lot of combinations right. Right now, so for October seventh or eighth or wherever we're at, I'm thinking about all the different uh, possibilities that we have amongst our roster because we are pretty tall and long. We've got positional length, and we've got a bunch of combinations that could be exciting, whether it's defensively, whether it's offensively. Um, but yeah, I think that for the 
to speak specifically to defense, uh, we're anchored by a seven footer who is one of the best block shot, shot blockers and rim protectors in the country a year ago as a junior um, in Justin Vanderbond. So uh, having that stability to protect the rim, to cover in ball screens, to be able to alter shots and defensive rebound um, is something that every single coach wants in their program because it, it allows you to be a good defensive team with that type of anchor. And then the athletic Athleticism and the ranginess with our wings and our forwards. Um, our speed is, is really impressive with our guard play. Um, so we, we can be creative. We can trap a little bit. We can play more 94 feet. We can switch ball screens. We can trap the ball screens. We can rotate out of some things aggressively. Uh, I've liked where our team is at this point uh, in the season when it relates to our ability to defend and uh, and use that ranginess that you're speaking about. No doubt, man. You know, he he's seven foot tall guy can cover a lot, a lot of mistakes, man. So make a mistake, you got somebody behind you that can really help you at the rim, man. So that's great to have that seven foot, that seven footer in the middle anchor and everything, man. And also for you, Mike, um, as we get close to November the fourth, tipping off against Villanova, man. Uh how excited are your guys to get into some of these close scrimmages, man, and scrimmage to see another another color, man? I know how it used to be, man. He wants to see somebody else at some point. Yeah, it, it, I don't think you're in Atlanta right now. You must be in our practice gym uh, because we're, we're hitting that that wall, that stage where we can sense a scrimmage coming. We can sense an exhibition coming. We know that November 4th at Villanova is right around the corner. Um, I, look, I, I think we're a little bit advanced from where we where we were the last couple of years um, for this time of, of the season. And with that comes a little bit of uh, uh, anxiety or anxiousness to get out there and compete against somebody else. Um, we're, we're sensing that we're, we're feeling that out. Um, it, it's getting a little bit, uh, monotonous competing against each other and we play really hard on a consistent basis. So well, we're looking forward to seeing a, a different color Jersey and seeing where we stand with them. It's not going to be pretty basketball, obviously in October, but when we get into November and we start playing those games, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to see where we're at. The main thing is compete without hurting somebody. That's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main thing. Let's compete without hurting one of our own. You know? That's right. That's right. Hey, that's happening all across the country. I mean, yeah, I talked to a bunch of friends and, and their programs and they've got some injuries and, you know, two weeks or three weeks into like the 20 hour uh, season, you know, you start to get a little bit of those things as you anticipate playing some games. But um, we've been knock on wood. We've been OK and pretty healthy. And hopefully that remains that way. Yes, no, no, no doubt, Mike. And I was looking at your schedule, man. You got Villanova, as we mentioned, LaSalle. You got Rhode Island. You go down to GW. Uh, talk about those playing those teams like that, man, and preparing you for that pitch league play and just knowing to get that guys to that experience of playing in these different historic places in, in Pennsylvania and around the, the, mid, the Mid-Atlantic area and really get to show, show what they can do against higher competition. Yeah, for sure. For us being in East Coast and Mid-Atlantic uh, located in, you know, right right outside of Philadelphia and close to New York, you know, for us to play those games is important. We've got a lot of uh, alumni in the region um, and our players love playing those higher level games. Right. So getting a chance to compete against those is good experience, but it also tells us exactly where we're at. Um, and if you look at what happened a year ago, like we did not perform well playing a really tough schedule and we didn't get the wins. But the things that we were doing, uh, we felt comfortable that they were going to translate once we hit Patriot League play. So playing that tough schedule allowed us to start off with a seven game win streak in Patriot League play and, and put us in position to kind of make a run and, and be competitive in our conference, which ultimately is what we want to do year in and year out. As we look into this non-conference schedule, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of the same. Um, we're, we're going to play some elevated talent, some big programs, and um, I, I think that it's going to give our chance, our guys a chance to be competitive right away, but also understand that things that we're doing now, we're preparing ourselves when January and February, and then you know ultimately in March when it all matters for us mid-majors. And Mike, how cool is it to have a uh, MC on campus, man? Talk about that, man, the experience having an MC on campus, had getting the quality opponents to come in and play you guys and really show off what, what Lafayette's all about, man. Yeah, it's great. So like in our region, we have access to so many different, uh, you know, areas in the Lehigh Valley. Um, it's easy to travel in from the north, from the south. You, you can fly into Newark or New York. You can fly into Philadelphia. We have an Allentown airport. Um, so when we sat down as a staff and thought about, well, what are we going to do for especially the holiday after Thanksgiving? You know, can we play in a tournament? Can we host a tournament? Um, we felt like this area provides a great opportunity to host teams um, in, in terms of what accommodations we have you know, locally, um, but then also to, to host home games against teams that are like us. Um, where those were the two top priorities. So I'm really excited for that. 
I, I hope that we are going to have a lot of support in our own building in Kirby. Um, but I know the players are excited too. We don't have to travel over that time. We get a chance to play some home games and it's right back to back to back. So it should be an exciting weekend. Yeah, kind of give you a little tournament feel to kind of prepare how it's going to go when tournament time comes around, you know, so with that pressure of doing that, man. And so it's definitely great. And, Mike, the last one for you, man, talk about how the Patriot League's basketball has even gotten so much better over the years, man, how people should really check it out more because it's some quality ball going on in the Patriot League. And there's a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players, a lot of guys you'll see overseas eventually after they get done, done in the Patriot League play. Yeah, you're right about that. So, you know, you can look back into some of the recent future and we've got guys like Mike Muscala and CJ McCollum, um, Malcolm Miller and it all in the NBA. Right. So from from our small league to, to have players in the NBA and then also kind of littered across international basketball, there's plenty of graduates that have gone on to play professional basketball. So having the opportunity to play pro uh, from our conference is definitely there, which is exciting for for the players that we get a chance to coach. Uh, you you hit the nail on the head. Uh, there's I got a ton of respect for the coaches in our league. Uh, they're very well studied. Um, they they have uh, they run great concepts offensively and defensively. Every single game, you feel like each coach and team is very well prepared for what you're going to do. Um, so you really have to bring your best to be able to be competitive in our conference day in and day out. Um, I will say that I do believe that the league has gotten better this year compared to a year ago. I think most teams are, are improved uh, in significant ways. Um, obviously, getting older is number one, but also, you know, just like us, adding some talent. Um, and uh, and we've got like five or six teams that return a ton from successful Patriot League uh, seasons. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of parity within the conference, and it'll be fun to watch throughout the season for college basketball fans. Well, Mike, I hope we're talking in March, man, when you're going to the big dance. I hope we're talking in March of that off week, and then you see where you're going to get to you there, man. So I'm put put it in the air right now, man. I was gonna say, great to see you in Atlanta. Um, be, I'll be cheering for you all year long, man. And, you know, anytime you want to come on the show, man, I'm, I'm glad to have you, brother. I appreciate you, my friend, and I hope to talk to you in March as well. All right, thanks, Mike. Appreciate you, man. Thank you.